Hey guys, today I'll be doing a guide on archers and Terra. I'll go over all of their abilities and how to use them, as well as some glyphs. I should first mention though that the Korean version of the game is several patches ahead and archers have been changed a bit in recent patches. So let's get started. Boop! The first starting ability you'll get as an archer is simply called Arrow. This is your basic attack and like most classes, this attack is primarily used to restore mana. It does less damage than any of your abilities will do. One thing to note about this ability is that you can easily hold it down as well as hold down your S key and you will be able to kite mobs infinitely without getting hit. This doesn't work on BAMs, but this is one of the reasons why archers are ranked one of the easiest classes to play and are great for beginners. Archers can easily damage BAMs from a distance without having to worry about incoming damage all that much. Another thing to note about this ability is that it can be glyphed to make it slow and stun in PvP. I'm going to go over glyphs in this guy, but I'll be focusing mainly on PvE glyphs, so I won't go into the ones for this ability. Before we get into any more abilities, I'd like to address something that's going to appear on all of your abilities as an archer. Nearly all of them are going to tell you that you're going to do less damage if your targets are further away. The damage is noticeable, but this doesn't mean it's always a good idea to run up to the mob's face in order to do increased damage. Using your range is very situational, especially on BAMs. Before you decide whether or not it's a good idea to run up to a BAM for increased damage, make sure you take into account what that BAM is capable of so you don't pull yourself needlessly close to the boss and get yourself killed. Most bosses have gigantic hitboxes, so you don't actually need to be very close to them anyway. The second ability an archer will start with is called Jump Back, and like other range classes, this ability makes you jump backwards. It isn't worth going into detail much, just use this as a small escape, or you can use it as a movement boost. You'll get a better escape later on though. The first ability you'll learn at level 2 is a skill called Arrow Volley. This is a lock-on skill that can lock on up to 5 targets, and is one of only 5 AoE damage skills you will get as an archer. This ability is neat in certain situations as you can do AoE on targets that aren't grouped up and you can move while locking on, but it is very situational and later on you'll find yourself almost never using this ability as it is very weak compared to other classes AoE skills. It's important to note that Archer's DPS is focused more around single target. Your AoE doesn't compare to classes like Sorcs or Berserkers or Slayers. If you like AoE grinding, Archer isn't the best class to pick. But if you like kiting and soloing while doing massive single target damage, they're a good choice. The next ability you'll get is called Penetrating Arrow. And like most classes, you get your most important skills early on. This is another AoE damage skill and it will be one of your primary damage skills all throughout leveling and at max level. Like the previous skill, it has a hit cap, though it's a bit higher at 10 targets. It still isn't comparable to other classes AoE, but it will be your main source of AoE damage. It's also trickier to use as you have to position yourself to line up your targets in order to get maximum damage. It's also a charge skill, but you can move while charging, so it's a good idea to take advantage of this and line up your targets as best you can while you are charging. Note that like most charge skills, this has an overcharge. Overcharge is when you fully charge your ability and take damage because of it. The damage is minor, but the longer you hold it in overcharge, the more damage you will take. So once charged, try to fire it as soon as possible. Next up is a skill called Slow Trap. It's exactly what the name implies, a slow trap. First thing to note is you will get three different traps as an archer, and though they don't share a cooldown, using one will put the others on five second cooldowns. You could potentially put down all three at once, but by the time you drop the third, the first will expire, and these traps have very situational uses anyway. You may be tempted in PvP to drop the trap and sit on it, but players are usually smart enough not to run into it. In PvE, it's easy to maximize on its movement slowing effect because mobs aren't smart enough to run around it, but in PvP, the best way to use this is to drop it down when a player is on top of you after stunning them and then jumping back. I'll go into that more as these other abilities come up though. The fifth ability is called Close Quarters. This is similar to a Lancer's Shield Barrage, though you'll find yourself using it a lot in PvP. You won't use this skill much against bands, only when soloing. This skill allows you to attack twice and stun your foe, giving you time to get away. It's a good idea to combo this ability with your slow trap so that you can stun your opponent, then slow them, then use your jump back ability. This makes for a great escape and makes it very hard for your enemies to re-engage you. Breakaway Bolt is your true escape ability and also one of your AoE abilities. This is like jump back, but it also does damage and makes you move back further. First thing to know is that Breakaway Bolt and Jump Back do not share cooldowns. You can use one after the other to get a ton of distance from an opponent. Because of the trick with Arrow and S key though, while soloing you won't need to use these abilities much. They're great for PvP though or if you get caught up out of position by a ban. Next up is an ability called Rapid Fire. It makes you fire 7 bolts very quickly. Note that the final shot does more damage than all the previous shots. What's good about this ability is that it is more of an enhancement on your basic attack ability. It doesn't cost mana and instead restores mana, thus you should start using it over your basic attack when you need mana. 
You can glitch this ability to restore more mana as well. Radiant Arrow is your core ability for single targets. It's a charge skill like Penetrating Arrow, but it is designed to hit only one target. Like Penetrating Arrow, you can move while charging it, and you take damage if you overcharge it. Some things to note about this skill when comparing it to Penetrating Arrow is that they both have glyphs that take away your slow while charging, but Penetrating Arrow can be glyphed to get increased damage, allowing it to closely match the damage of Radiant Arrow. In most cases though, you won't be using one or the other, you'll be using them one after the other, at least in BAM DPS situations. Also note that both of these abilities chain into another skill called Salvo, but I'll explain that skill in a bit. The next skill you'll learn is called Poison Arrow. This is another core damage ability that does damage when you shoot it and puts a damage over time on the opponent. The cooldown on this ability is 5 seconds and the debuff lasts 12 seconds, meaning there's no reason you should ever let this debuff drop off of an enemy. This ability stacks up to 3 times and starts doing significant amounts of damage. You want to make sure to keep the stack to full on anything that has a significant amount of health. The glyphs on this ability are worth talking about because one of them reduces the charging time on the previous ability, Radiant Arrow, and the other increases the duration of this debuff. I recommend getting both of these glyphs for PvE so that you don't have to restack the Poison Arrow too often, and so you can chain it into Radiant Arrow and make Radiant Arrow charge very fast. I'll go over full DPS combos at the end of this video though. The tenth skill you'll learn is called Final Salvo, but it's easier to just call it Salvo. This is a chain version of Rapid Fire that changed nicely into both Penetrating Arrow and Radiant Arrow, but if you are using both of these skills one after the other, Salvo won't be able to chain after both of them because of its cooldown. The biggest thing about this ability is that, though it hits for less than rapid fire, it also restores mana and fits nicely into your chain combo so that you don't go out of mana. Next up is your second trap called Concussive Trap. Like I mentioned before with Slow Trap, this puts a cooldown on your other traps and it is very situational. What it does is it stuns an enemy that walks through it. It's good to use in PvP and PvE and will replace your Slow Trap in most cases as you get attacks that will do slowing for you later on. This stun does miss and get resisted often though. Your third and final trap is called Incendiary Trap. Unlike the others, this is a damage trap and is the fourth out of your five AoE damage abilities as an archer. This one is situational like the others as it requires you to run up to groups of mobs to drop it in the order for it to do damage. You can drop it beforehand while your lancer is gathering the mobs, but make sure your lancer has already used taunt before you use this or you'll pull aggro and might get yourself killed. The best way to use this ability is in combination with the AoE from your breakaway shot. You can run in, drop this trap on a group of mobs, then hit breakaway shot to land both of these AoE abilities and follow up with a penetrating shot. Velix Mark is the last core spell you will get. This should be the ability you open with, always, as it increases the damage a monster takes from all of your attacks by 10%. It lasts 30 seconds, so don't forget to recast it. It can also be glyphed to make Poison Arrow cost less mana and shoot faster after it is cast, which is why it opens nicely into your typical damage rotation. When I say the word rotation, I mean it loosely though, as the chances of you using ideal abilities in this game in the right order is very low, but I'll get into that later. Next up is a skill called Feign Death, which is essentially an aggro drop. This ability can be used in PvP, but if you use it poorly, you'll just look like a moron. It has a long cooldown, so be careful when deciding to drop aggro. I'll take this time now to explain that in dungeons, some bosses may summon mobs that will run around and start attacking the healer. Unlike other MMOs where you yell at the tank for this, as a DPS in Terra you simply can't ignore mobs during boss fights. Your Lancer will be too busy tanking the boss and keeping it in position that in most cases he won't be able to grab that mob. As a ranged DPS with high kiting capabilities, you should instinctively go for these mobs and pull them off of your healer kiting them and killing them by yourself or with the help of the other damage dealers. If a mob is running loose and you simply rage at your lancer, you are the one at fault, not the lancer. Your 15th skill is called Web Arrow and it's essentially a slow. It only slows 20% which may not seem like a lot compared to Slow Trap or another ability coming up, but it lasts 5 seconds and it has a 5 second cooldown meaning it can have 100% uptime. This is huge in duels and in most PvP situations as using this will get you are always faster than the person chasing you, thus they can only catch you using gap closers, to which you can respond with your own gap opening capabilities. The next two abilities go hand in hand. The first is called Sniper's Eye, Courage. This gives you strength bonus, and it makes you do extra damage to players, with an upkeep mana cost. The downside is that it will decrease your attack speed by 15%. This is the one you will most likely be using in PvP. The other sniper's eye is called discretion. 
It's exactly the same as Courage, only that instead of decreasing your attack speed, it will decrease your movement speed. This is the one you'll want to be using in standstill PvE fights. You'll probably be wondering right now, but Hakurai, it says it increases damage against players. Why would I use it in PvE? And to that I'll just point out the 50 strength it gives while it's active. The mana and movement speed is a small price to pay if you're standing still. 50 strength adds a quite a bit of damage to all of your attacks. Either way, these two abilities are situational, and it's up to you to decide whether whether or not you should be using them and when. Your second last spell is a super slow called Restraining Arrow. This debuff works on bosses to an extent. It has a 15 second cooldown but lasts as long as your web arrow is slow, 5 seconds. It slows more and hits harder than web arrow as well as having an attack speed reduction component so you'll be using this over web arrow when you can but note that like all forms of CC in this game it has a chance to miss and be resisted so web arrow is still a good backup in cases of this spell not working. And last but not least is a spell called Reign of Arrows. It's only at max level do archers finally get a real unrestricted AoE spell. This lets you compete with other classes in high-end dungeons for AoE damage, but while casting this, you will be immobile. You don't do as much AoE damage as other classes will, but this at least puts you on the board. Familiarize yourself with the distance at which this skill casts so that you don't miss, because once you cast it, you are committed to it for a few seconds. This is a great spell to contribute to AoE damage on large pulls. It has a fairly long cooldown though, so you can't spam it, and it isn't forgiving if you miss where you cast it. Alright, now that I've explained all of your abilities, let me explain an archer's roll as well as your typical DPS rotation. First, do not get in the habit of sticking to a single rotation no matter what, especially not in PvP. This game isn't like other MMOs. You have to move and adapt to what is happening constantly. If ads are spawning, or if a bam is on you, or if in PvP you're getting trained, you have to adjust what you're doing to deal with it. That being said, it is still a good idea to have frameworks set in your head about what will make you do maximum damage. If you read the Archer Glyphs at all, they tell a story on their own, but in case you can't pick up on it, I'll explain it now. First, you want to open with Velix Mark. This ability can be glyphed to reduce the mana cost and cast time in Poison Arrow. So after you cast Velix Mark, you start off with Poison Arrow. You want to stack this Poison Arrow to 3 as quickly as possible so that it is ticking for a lot of damage every 2 seconds. After you cast Poison Arrow, there is a glyph for Poison Arrow that reduces the charge time of Radiant Arrow significantly. So cast Radiant Arrow next. This will make Radiant Arrow charge extremely fast and it will chain into your Salvo skill. Use Salvo after Radiant Arrow for two reasons. One, it will restore some much needed mana without breaking your chain, and two, Salvo can be glyphed to reduce the charging time of Penetrating Arrow. Thus, once you finish casting Salvo, you can quickly charge Penetrating Arrow and shoot it, giving you a nice combo of two powerful hits, a restack on your poison, and some mana regen. Typically, you just repeat this rotation as much as possible, restacking Velix Mark when needed. Poison Arrow into Radiant Arrow, into Salvo, into Penetrating Arrow, then repeat. In cases where you do go out of mana, just break the rotation and use Rapid Fire. That's all for Archer Abilities and Glyphs. I hope you found this information useful. I know a lot of you are still deciding what you want to play when Terra comes out in North America. Let me just say that Archers may be weak in AoE, but their single target damage and ability to solo bands without taking any damage makes them a very good choice. I'll be doing a guide for Mystics soon, so I'll see you all next time. Boop.